1. On 1 29 2022, I was the patrol supervisor of the 12 a.m. 8 a.m. shift. At approximately 6.04 a.m., I received E911 call from a woman reporting an unresponsive male party found in the snow at 34 Fairview Road. At the time, the weather was very heavy snow with air temperature in the teens. The call was transferred to Canton Fire, and I dispatched O. Seraph and Mullany to assist. I notified Lt. Gallagher and Ed Sergeant Lank respectfully after hearing the seriousness of the call. 2. Once on scene, the victim was already in the back of the ambulance, and CPR was in progress. I was met by McCabe, Jennifer, 2 14 1976, Roberts, Carrie, 1 10 1977, and Reed, Karen, 2 26 1980, standing outside of the ambulance. All parties will be referenced by their first names going forward. Jennifer introduced herself to me and explained that they found their friend O'Keefe, John, 12 8 1975, lying unresponsive on his back in the snow. Jennifer explained that they arrived at this address because it was the last place Karen, John's girlfriend, believed he would be. Jennifer stated she had gotten a call from Karen around 4.53 a.m., inquiring about John's whereabouts. She told Karen she didn't know where he was. I asked Jennifer why she would think you would know where he was. Jennifer explained that a group of them had all been at the Waterfall Grill and Bar in Canton earlier in the night. At around 12 a.m., Jennifer and her husband left the bar, heading to her brother-in-law Brian Albert's house at 34 Fairview Road. Jennifer stated Karen and John were at the bar together, and around 12.14 a.m., John texted Jennifer asking where they were going. Jennifer invited them to 34 Fairview Road. A short time later, Jennifer stated she saw Karen and John pull up in their car and saw the passenger door open, but they never came in, and she saw the car drive off. Jennifer just thought they changed their mind and went home for the night. 3. I walked over to Karen and asked her who she was and how she ended up here. I also placed Karen in the back of my Mark Cruiser 682 to warm up. Karen was hysterical and continually yelled, Is he dead? I kept reassuring her that Canton Fire was doing everything they could to save his life. I asked how John ended up there, and she stated, I don't know. I asked her if she drove here last night, and she stated, I think so, then I can't remember. At this point, I stopped asking questions because she was too upset and was unable to keep her train of thought. 4. Dead Sergeant Lang arrived on the scene, and I briefed him on what had transpired so far. I then spoke to Carrie, who stated she was contacted by her friend Karen around 5 a.m., wondering if she knew where John was. Carrie stated she called a few hospitals and the Canton police to see if he had been transported at some point during the night. Then Carrie picked up Jennifer and Karen, and they began to search for John ending up here at 34 Fairview. 5. Canton Fire began to transport the victim to Good Samaritan, and Karen who was now sitting in Carrie's car, began to act out yelling and screaming, is be dead, and trying to get out of the car and walk around. At this time, I advised Carrie to take Karen home and that she was not needed anymore. Moments later, I was contacted by dispatch that Karen was making suicidal statements to her father over the phone. I made the decision to have Carrie bring Karen back to the scene and had her transported to the hospital via Section 12. 6. Dead Sergeant Lank, at this time, contacted the homeowners at 34 Fairview Road and completed a supplemental report. 7. I spoke to a seraph and asked him what he observed arriving first on scene. Seraph stated he saw a woman, Karen, attempting CPR on the victim in the snow. Seraph stated Karen had blood around her mouth which he believed was from the victim's mouth and nose area. Seraph explained seconds later Canton Fire arrived on scene and took over medical care, and moments later I arrived. Canton Police Department Supplemental Narrative for Patrolman Stephen A. Seraph. 1. On 1 22 I was dispatched to 34 Fairview Road for a report of an unresponsive party in the snow. When I arrived, I saw three people on the ground over the victim, O'Keefe, waving at me. They said he was not breathing. They were performing CPR on O'Keefe. I noticed Reed, Karen, the victim's girlfriend had blood on her face from doing mouth to mouth. O'Keefe was bleeding from his face. I went over to the victim and felt his skin and it was cold to the touch. I asked if he was a drug user and they said no, he is a Boston cop. I went to get the AED from my patrol vehicle and at the same moment the Canton Fire Department was arriving. CFD took over the care of Mr. O'Keefe. 2. Following that, Reed Karen kept screaming is he dead, is he dead. 
She was severely distraught and was not able to tell me what happened. I tried to console her and keep her out of the inclement weather. I had her sit in one of the cars. Sergeant Good arrived and started speaking to the, the parties that were there. Canton Police Department. Supplemental Narrative for Stephen Mullany. 1. On Wednesday, January 29, 2022, Officer Mullany was assigned to patrol the East Sector for the 1145 P745 A patrol shift. At approximately 6.05, a Officer Seraph and I were dispatched to 34 Fairview Road for a report of an unresponsive party. 2. Upon my arrival, Canton FD was arriving on scene. Off. Seraph had already been on scene. When I exited my cruiser I observed a female party attempting CPR on the victim in the snow. As I approached the victim, Canton FD began CPR. I then assisted Canton FD with lifting the victim onto a stretcher. The victim was then taken by stretcher to the ambulance. 3. At this time, off. Seraph asked me to assist in getting witnesses' information. I then spoke with McCabe, Jennifer. I asked McCabe who the victim was, and she identified the victim as O'Keefe, John. McCabe then explained to me that a group of people had gone out to Waterfall Grill and Bar in Canton Center earlier in the night. Jennifer stated that she and her husband left the bar at approximately 12 and went to her brother-in-law's house at 34 Fairview Road. McCabe then told me that O'Keefe and his girlfriend, Reed Karen, were invited to 34 Fairview Road but never arrived. I asked McCabe if she possibly knew how long the victim had been where he was found, and she told he was dropped off by Reed sometime between 12 a 1 a. McCabe then told me that she was called by Reed at approximately 5 o'clock wondering if she knew where John was. At this time, Sergeant Good arrived on scene, and the victim was transported to Good Samartian shortly after. 4. While talking to McCabe, Reed was hysterical and distraught and repeatedly screamed, Is he dead and that's my boyfriend? Sergeant Good then advised Roberts, Carey, to take Reed home. After Reed and Roberts left, Canton Control advised officers that Reed was making suicidal statements to her father. Roberts then brought Reed back to the scene where Sergeant Good asked me to fill out Section 12 paperwork, and she was transported to Good Samaritan Hospital. I stayed on scene and assisted Sergeant Good, Det. Sergeant Lank and Lieutenant Gallagher. Canton Police Department Supplemental Narrative for Sergeant Michael Seven Lank. On 129 2022 at 608 a.m., I was contacted at home by Sergeant Sean Good. Sergeant Good advised me that a male party had been found in the snow by the area of 34 Fairview Road. Sergeant Good stated that the party involved, who is a Boston police officer, was in grave condition, and Canton EMS was on scene. The conditions at this time were blizzard-like, with heavy snow, wind, and freezing temperatures. 2. At approximately 624 a.m., I arrived on scene at 34 Fairview Road. Sergeant Good, Officer Seraph, and Officer Mullany had already spoken to multiple witnesses, and the victim was being treated in the ambulance by Canton EMS. The ambulance left for Good Samaritan Hospital shortly after I arrived. Sergeant Good made me aware that the officers and EMTs told him that the victim was bleeding from the nose and mouth. They also stated that he appeared to have swelling above one of his eyes. 3. The first person that I spoke to was McCabe, Jennifer. She was able to provide us with a general timeline of events. Jennifer was at Waterfall Bar and Grill in Canton with her husband, Matthew McCabe, Brian Albert, brother-in-law, and Nicole Albert, sister. Approximately 1,100 p.m. They were accompanied at the bar by O'Keefe, John, and his girlfriend, Reed Karen. Approximately 1,200 a.m., Jennifer, Matthew, Brian, and Nicole left the bar and went back to Albert's house at 34 Fairview Road. Approximately 1,214 a.m., O'Keefe texted Jennifer and asked where they were going. Jennifer responded that they were going to 34 Fairview Road. Moments later, a vehicle pulled up in front of the house, which Jennifer believed was O'Keefe and his girlfriend, Reed. She observed as the vehicle just sat out in front of the house for several minutes. The vehicle was facing uphill, with the passenger side facing the house. She thought that the vehicle sat outside for at least 15 minutes. McCabe stated that neither party ever came to the door, and, ultimately, the vehicle drove away. She attempted to text O'Keefe but never got a response. At approximately 1.30 a.m., McCabe and her husband leave the house and give a ride home to Julie Nagel, who lives on Highland Street in Canton. Approximately 4.53 a.m., McCabe was contacted by Reed and Nice of O'Keefe. 
They were distraught because O'Keefe never arrived home and was not answering his phone. McCabe and Reed attempted to call some of O'Keefe's close friends, including Roberts, Carey. Approximately 500 a.m., Roberts picked up McCare and Reed to go looking for O'Keefe. Approximately 600 a.m., Roberts, McCabe, and Reed locate O'Keefe in the yard of 34 Fairview Road. He was located on the left side of the yard about eight feet in from the street. He was found unconscious on the ground, laying on his back. Roberts began to perform. Canton Police Department. Supplemental heritage for Burgeon Michael J. Lank. Approximately 604 a.m., 911 call was placed to the Canton Police Station. Officers on scene were able to secure the scene as best they could, as the weather conditions continued to be severe. State Police CPAC unit was contacted at 638 a.m. Trooper Proctor called back within a few minutes and was made aware of the situation. While on scene, all attempts to speak with Reed were unsuccessful. She was hysterical and difficult to control. The only statement that she was able to relay to Canton officers while on scene was that she did not remember ever being at 34 Fairview Road. Reed later made statements via telephone to her parents, threatening suicide. Canton EMS ultimately responded back to the scene, and Reed was taken to the hospital under a Section 12 order. Next, I went into 34 Fairview Road and spoke with the homeowners, Albert, Brian and Albert, Nicole. Both parties from this point forward will be referred to by their first names. Brian stated that they had seen the victim at Waterfall Bar and Grill and had spoken to him. He stated that he did not know the party well, but knew that he was a friend of McCabe, sister-in-law. Brian and Nicole recall that the victim had been welcomed to come to their house, but he never arrived. When asked about O'Keefe's demeanor or if O'Keefe had any altercations with anyone earlier at the bar, Brian said that he seemed to be fine at the bar and there were no issues whatsoever. McCabe, Matthew, husband of Jennifer, also stated that he had observed the vehicle pull up out front of the house, but never saw either party get out of the vehicle. Matthew also reiterated what Brian said. O'Keefe seemed to be fine at the bar and that there was really nobody else in the establishment other than their group. Next, I asked Brian and Nicole who else was at the house that night. Aside from the names already mentioned, the following people were present at some point during the time in question. Brian Albert Jr. Brian and Nicole's son, Caitlin Albert, daughter, Julie Nagel, Brian Jr.'s friend, and Brian Higgins, who is a friend of Brian Albert Sr. They advise me that their daughter Caitlin left the house around 1,215 a.m. when she was picked up by her boyfriend Tristan Morris. While still on scene, Lt. Gallagher, Sergeant Good and I attempted to retrieve as much evidence as possible given the weather conditions. Lt. Gallagher was able to use a leaf blower to blow away the top layers of snow. We were able to observe a broken drinking glass and multiple patches of red, which appeared to be frozen blood drops. Six samples of this substance was retrieved by using red solo plastic cups. The broken glass was retrieved and bagged into evidence. Both items were returned to the Canton Police Station and logged into evidence. At approximately 900 a.m., I was contacted at the police station by McCabe, Jennifer. Canton Police Department. She asked if it was possible to come back to 34 Fairview Road and speak with her. Lieutenant Gallagher and I both left immediately and arrived back at 34 Fairview within a few moments. McCabe told us that she recalled something that she was not sure if we were aware of. She said that when Reed was driving around with her and Roberts looking for the victim, she said something to the effect of I hope I didn't hit him. McCabe told us that she made these statements again at the scene when the victim was discovered. She thought that Reed may have made these statements in front of a police officer, but she was not sure.